Right. Hello, everyone. This is Marshall Gettler, Head of Investment Research here at BD Swiss, bringing you our uh, special event webinar on the Fed interest rate decision. Uh, just before we get started, we have to show you this risk warning. And remember to please be careful trading because there are risks involved. This is your money. Right. Well, All right, so Marshall, before, before you get going, let me interrupt you quickly. So, oh, guys, okay. I'm also with Marshall here. Frank, uh, obviously, as oh, well. Yes, I've uh, already started a trade. So, we are already long the euro dollar. And uh, before Marshall starts uh, uh, having his presentation over, we just entered the euro dollar currency pair long. We entered at about 113.59. Our VIP clients already got the message also over the Telegram uh, group message here. I just don't want you guys to, to miss out. The idea is quickly, but we'll come to that later. The idea is quickly to get into a quick move to the upside, hopefully, and then potentially take profit out of that. But we'll see how. So, Marshall, please take over for now. I'll uh, interrupt if anything happens. But so far, the US dollar seems weakening a bit. And uh, I'll listen to you now, Marshall. Please go ahead. Okay, and let me know if you need the screen. I'll uh, flip it, flip it over if you want to show a, a graph. Right? Yeah, I should be fine. So, let's first discuss the what uh, the Fed's job is. The Fed's job is set by its dual mandate, which is laid out in the an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. It says, and they're required to aim for the goals of maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates. Now, actually, this is three things, isn't it? But it's referred to as the dual mandate because people assume that if you have maximum employment and stable prices, you will automatically have moderate long-term interest rates. So people just focus on maximum employment and stable prices. This is the Fed's job. This is what it's supposed to aim for. So how are we doing in relation to that? Well, in fact, right now we don't have maximum employment. We have maximum unemployment. We have the highest unemployment since current records began in 1950, um, well, last month it was even higher, I have to say. It was up at 19% last, I think it was last month. Uh, but it's 13%, so except for last month, it was the highest. And that's there are a lot of problems with the way they calculate this, and they admit there are problems. If you just took everybody who wanted a job and couldn't find one, people who gave up looking for jobs, people who are only working part-time and want to work full-time, then you get what's called the underemployment rate, and that's over 20%. Now, at the height of the Great Depression, uh, the unemployment rate, the worst was about 24.9%. So we are at depression-level unemployment right now. Okay, and the other thing was stable prices. Well, stable means stable on the downside as well as on the upside, meaning not falling as well as not rising. Uh, on the left-hand graph, we have the consumer price index, the headline consumer price index. Uh, there's the blue line there. It's almost down to zero, like no inflation at all. The core CPI, which eliminates energy prices, is about 1% a year. Uh, a lot of the fall in the CPI is because oil prices have fallen so much. The Fed actually doesn't use the consumer price index. They use what's called the personal consumption expenditure deflator as their measure. That's on the right-hand graph. That's showing the same thing too, that um, the core personal consumption expenditure deflator, which is their main inflation target, also around 1%, their target is 2%. So they're nowhere near their target for inflation. Uh, and you can see nowhere near their target for inflation, nowhere near their target for employment. So what are they done about it? Well, they dropped interest rates to zero, uh, more or less zero, uh, zero to 25 basis points. And as you can see, then the graph on the left, uh, the red line, people expect them to stay there until the spring of 2023. So uh, the market expects zero interest rates for the next three years, more or less. Uh, you may think that's going up, but look at the scale. Right now, it's 0.8%. People expect it to go up to 0.12%, like nothing, basically. And a couple of uh, about a month, a week ago, people were expecting the, you know, they were expecting rates to go modestly as negative. Uh, that'll be an interesting question. And they've dropped interest rates to zero, and meanwhile, they've blown their balance sheet up fantastically. That's the graph on the right. You can see uh, at some point this, this uh, 
in recent weeks, they were buying $600 billion a week in, uh, in bonds. Uh, now they're down to about 20 billion a week. Uh, I'm sorry, 4 billion, 4 billion or so a week. Uh, anyway, they bought $3 trillion worth of, of um, bonds and other assets so far this year. Three trillion dollars. So they've almost doubled the size of their balance sheet in two months. It's astonishing. And what do we expect from this meet from this meeting? What are they going to do this time? Well, I think the first thing to look at is their statement of their summary of economic projections, the SEP. Uh, at the March meeting, they skipped doing a a, uh, economic projections because back in March, nobody knew what on earth was going to happen. And uh, so this is going to be the first expression of their views since the pandemic began. This is very important uh, because it establishes a baseline for whether things are working out better or worse than they expected. And therefore, a baseline for figuring out what they are likely to do. So people will be watching their, looking at their forecast very carefully. Among, within the statement of economic projections, they have what's called the dot plot. Each member of the FOMC the, uh, puts, gets one, uh, makes a forecast for where they think interest rates will be at the end of each year. And then they plot all of these as a bunch of dots on a graph. And uh, really, I think that they, that they are, what they are going to do is to ratify the government, the market's um, predict, predictions. I think all of these dots are likely to be at zero or 20, at 25 basis points going all the way out to the forecast period. That's what I think is likely pretty much unanimous agreement uh, to keep rates on hold. That's what I'm expecting. The interesting thing will be if one or two people forecast negative rates, that will be quite, uh, that would be quite dramatic. Uh, because right now they've rejected the idea of negative rates. People will want to see if there's any constituency in the FOMC for negative rates. Or will there be some people who are forecasting a rise in rates as the recovery takes hold? And that brings us to the third thing, which is how, the combination of the two, how they're going to react if growth improves. Uh, will they raise rates or will they uh, keep rates steady? Uh, what If they forecast that they'll keep rates steady even as the economy improves, then that will be mean a looser monetary policy. What are they going to do with their forward guidance? Their forward guidance was very uh, vague at the last meeting. Uh, they, they said uh, they will maintain this target range until it is, the committee is confident that the economy has weathered recent events and is on track to achieve its maximum employment and price stability goals. What does uh, weathered recent events and what does on track mean? Uh, will they firm this up? Will they put in some numerical targets? Will they, um, probably it's too early for any change. I think they're still kind of vague. I think they're worried about a second wave of virus. So I don't think there'll be any change there. Asset purchases, uh, I'm sorry, they're buying about 4 billion a week now, or I'm sorry, 5 billion a week. So 20 billion a month. I expect them to confirm that they will continue at this rate. That's one thing we, for a firm number, I think we can expect that they'll keep buying at 20 billion a month. And the most important thing is the press conference. Uh, afterwards, Fed Chair Powell is going to have a press conference. How does he see the recovery developing? How quickly does he see us, the economy getting back to growth? And in particular, what's his reaction to this employment data? Does he really think that it's all over now, that we're going, we're in recovery mode? Uh, how will that affect his view? I expect that they will be continue to be bearish. Powell has consistently said that this is going to be a long-term event. It will take a long time to recover. And he's consistently said he's worried about a second wave of virus, which is turning out to be quite true. They've lifted the uh, lockdown in many states and things are getting worse in many places. So I expect them to remain dovish. And because of that, I expect a, the dollar to remain weak or to weaken afterwards. With this dovish tone, I think the market will just be reinf have reinforced this idea of selling dollars, which is basically what it's wanted to do anyway recently. I think this will be a green light for the dollar bears and I expect the dollar to fall afterwards. 
And with that, let's see what uh, how Frank uh, would trade it. All right. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Marshall, for your interesting words. So I fully agree with you as well, and I would say uh, the market should be should be rather traded uh, well to the uh, downside, uh, at least to some extent. And uh, obviously, sharing my screen now. Yep, you can see that here. Uh, we've started a trade uh, already. That's why, uh, sorry, Marshall, I had to interrupt you at the beginning here. Euro dollar upside potential is pretty much imminent. And I think that that's uh, somewhat the idea. The market has moved already substantially to the upside. So I wouldn't see that a lot of potential could be seen. But um, potentially, as well, we might see Euro dollar heading further uh, a bit higher here before profit taking. It could be, uh, it could be, uh, it could be uh, taking place as well. And uh, hence, I would say 1380, 1390 would be my expected range here if the market however quickly starts moving further uh, to the upside here and uh, the dot plots as um, as marshall just mentioned as well could be a uh, could be something interesting for us to, to note uh, yen asset i would say potentially weakening us dollar is in the charts is what we can see so far is what we've seen in the recent days or say weeks of trading as well we see also yesterday i mean candlesticks don't really pay uh, or g give us a, a lot of uh, ideas moving forward here for this event but we can see there is some negativity in the us dollar meaning in this case for the euro dollar to move higher potentially uh, to be seen as well we could uh, keep an eye on the stock markets they have uh, uh, turned into a sideways pattern here uh, right now and i am as well mostly out of my uh, positions i've held a lot of uh, stock positions here as well for the ones of you who've been asking as well now if you received a few messages frank what do you reckon what makes sense to buy technically every nonsense uh, uh, was was buyable if you would say so if even uh, retail investors uh, like us uh, were, were interestingly enough for uh, purchasing Hertz, well, that's it. It's a company which is filing for bankruptcy as well. If you even buy shares from Hertz, uh, causing the market to go up as well, well, then I don't know as well what's happening. Just uh, that I'm already uh, getting out of the market and keeping my short positioning here. I have the feeling that everything here is likely to roll over to the downside, offering us quite a bit of downside potential as well. How much it's going to happen, I don't know, but obviously, dovish market movements usually from the federal reserve or from the fomc today would uh, would mean as well that stock markets could turn higher so be prepared for this we still have a, a bit of our german dax long positioning on as well as the contract trade against our uh, short positions here and uh, also we can see right now stock stock markets tumbling a little bit at least and uh, uh, still we can see as well potentially uh, in the markets right now that even the S&P as said is bottoming a little bit and could even uh, could even kind of uh, move a bit further to the upside here and uh, similarly speaking to the uh, Nasdaq as well technology index here as well moving higher so all that um, uh, potentially showing us uh, upside momentum Ahead. In any case, uh, euro dollar long, uh, that's at least what we uh, strive for here right now. We can see also vice versa. We are looking at the US dollar against the uh, Canadian dollar. This one likely breaking at least some interesting support. Now, to recap, Canadian dollar, commodity currency, longer term chart looks actually bearish as well the canadian dollar against momentum on stronger oil prices this is what we can see even oil is starting to strengthen a bit further hence obviously the markets uh, the markets uh, show us uh, further momentum as well oil is stronger here uh, looking interesting as well for us and hence uh, obviously as well that uh, the canadian dollar could gain momentum over the us dollar in any case we'll keep it short and simple for now and wait for the market what the market uh, does i would be as said uh, interested potentially here to uh, to at least uh, take some profit of uh, of uh, this position here and potentially even uh, close this position and uh, close some of this position out here if uh, if the market would give us uh, the chances at least to do so all right opening uh, this one here the market tends a bit higher so importance here to be a quick as well marshall if you could uh, help us as well in the next couple of seconds to digest the fundamentals uh, of course in the background highly appreciate it hi guys i'm hi. in the swiss okay. japanese yen Stuart. that's not related to uh, federal reserve i'm not looking at this do you have any advice for me on this pair for this event and no advice at all it's not related to me at least both risky or risk of currencies uh, don't make any sense to me to trade those especially against each other here so the market 
moves a bit higher, a weaker US dollar as expected. Okay, that's uh, interesting here. Let's uh, close a bit of this one out here. So it made sense for us potentially at least. Uh, Marshall, any news from the... Uh... Uh, nothing, nothing yet. All right. Okay. At least I've market. got the um, market slide being, log on. Nothing. Problem being, yes, the problem is that the market is already heavily, heavily short US dollars here currently. And Fed, sees have... zero, Fed sees zero rates through 2022. Let's wow. Okay. As dovish uh, as we've heard about it. Put a, put a floor on resource scale asset purchases. Yes. Okay. And they will. They oh, they said that they will continue to buy bonds at least at the current pace, which is as I said, twenty billion a month. So at least if, if the if the uh, strange why the US dollar is strengthening. Right. Relay statements. Uh, so the increase would be about eighty billion a month. Oh, it's rising too wow. much really right now. Ooh, 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 ooh. Potentially, potentially market participants were eyeing a further easing of rates or something, which is why it's not happening. The US dollar strengthens a bit. Interesting news event. I'm happy that we took at least some profit right now. Mm -hmm. um, if the dust cool. settles, I want to get out of this position maybe earlier All here. All policymakers expect Fed funds rate to remain near zero through the end of 2021. All but yes. two of see them staying there through 2022. All right. Nothing about negative rates, and two people see a, a rate hike in 2022. Yeah. Dollar cat. I'm keeping an eye on dollar cat as well for potentially another short here, but I'm wondering as well what the market does. If we can close this one close to the entry, I would actually be interested to do so, to be utterly honest here. Um, no market eyes further to the upside here. This is crazy movement. Interesting. Yeah, closing out this one, guys. I close out another. Uh, I close out the second half here. I'll wait for the dust to settle a little bit first. Um, I think the interesting pair potentially might really be the dollar cat short. That's looking interesting. Let's get a bit out here and there. That's something interesting. Dollar cat. Let's see. Very few changes. And I'm reading the statements. Very few changes from the previous yeah. previous month. Uh, okay. Let's see. They say financial conditions have improved, but that's about it. Uh, <laughs> Financial conditions have improved, but that is such a huge balance sheet. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah. Financial <laughs> conditions have improved, but they don't say necessarily that the economy has improved. Yeah. I've heard something that in North America, uh, about 200 out of 400 Starbucks uh, shops are closing permanently. Is that true? That would be all right. Dollar cut short. Keeps on running, guys. I'm a bit cautious here. I was uh, that was actually very interesting. I was thinking at first here, as Marshall said, no change as well. That the market took it to be rather strong dollars here. Uh, that's changing, but we are already in the dollar cat short. So um, at least uh, we can make a little bit potentially here. That's Nasdaq moving up, S and P moving higher as well. The Dow sits also on slight profit. The German DAX doesn't do well anything major, potentially as usual, but uh, we can see, okay, now the euro dollar moves higher as well. That's interesting. New fresh increase in value as well. Yeah, I mean, how many pips we have? 33, 70, we have 13 pips. Poor. Keeping an eye on this support. Support could be broken here on the dollar cat, especially after the four-hour candle. The thing is, uh, the thing is, uh, what I'm what I'm looking at uh, potentially that uh, the press conference, Marshall. Uh, what do you think? Uh, could that be of further impact? Obviously, it should. But, oh, yeah. um, oh yes, 
Yes, it will give a much better idea of the tone. We have the numbers. I'm quite looking at the forecast for the, the these people. I'm look, now looking at the forecast that they put out. They're actually quite seem to be quite optimistic. Uh, they expect mm. the the just looking at the medians right now. For example, they expect the unemployment rate to be 9.3 percent this year, which is terrible. But next year they're looking for 6.5 percent. Uh, 2022 is 5.5. That's bad, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not depression level by any by any means. Uh, we were at 5.5 percent a few years ago, mm -hmm. 6.5 also. So they they see the economy getting back to what can I say semi normal next year. I would say uh, G GDP next year they expect GDP growth of five percent. That's very strong, uh, obviously because they expect this year to be minus 6.5 percent. So uh, it isn't hard to be a gain, show a gain from that. And 2022, they're looking for 3.5%. So they're looking, they, uh, they're looking for a pretty ro robust recovery, I would say. They're looking at mm -hmm. least for next year for things to start getting back to, back to normal. Mm -hmm. uh, the, un the inflation rate, though they don't see coming back to 2%, uh, within the, within the target range that uh, 2022 they say 1.7, and if you look at the, what's called the central tendency, where they knock out the highest and the lowest, it's 1.6 to 1.8. So still the the on balance they're not looking for inflation to get back to target. That means yeah that explains why they expect rates to remain at zero even as the economy recovers. I would say that's fairly dovish. Uh, they're looking for a pretty good re economy, but they're willing to keep rates stay, re rates unchanged because Unch yeah. at low levels, yeah, at zero, even because they expect uh, um, unemployment to remain high and inflation to remain below their target. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll do the same thing here with this trade. I close, uh, I close half off as well. So at least we have some fruitful trading, I would say, for the day. Stop loss goes towards um, towards a break even as well so nothing much can burn i like that especially in doing some uh, news trading here that's always uh, some uh, uh, wrong it's always something interesting i think to do so so that should at least uh, work out yeah a little bit of profit and now we fall further <laughs> something interesting okay so uh, yeah. Um, Raj, can you share some light on Dow Jones? Uh, will it also move upwards like Nasdaq? Good question. Um, um, I think the rally in the stock markets anyways uh, did not stop off any share whatsoever, right? I think we had the S&P 500 early of the week, um, which, uh, which started moving higher. Every single stock actually went up. So as I said, you can just, uh, you can just put your, your litter bin in front of your doorstep and kind of have people bidding on your litter bin. Every nonsense, every, every loaf of toast or something, you can kind of, uh, you can sell to your friends or to your neighbors. Everyone, you buy buy a, a bread of lo bread of uh, a loaf of bread in the in the supermarket and sell it to your friends or to your neighbors for double the price. Uh, a couple of days later, that's currently how the stock market seemingly are, are being bid, right? So, to me, it's utterly nonsense. To me, it's uh, not really making sense. I'm not sane enough, <laughs> and please get me here. I'm not sane enough to stay in. As said, I've had. A lot of uh, shares, I've had quite a bit of equities uh, when the markets went lower and uh, I sold most, the majority of those uh, because I feel the markets uh, have done a fair bit already. So dollar cut looks actually good. So I'm happy that we keep keep half at least on. And um, the rest, uh, the rest, I'll keep my shots and uh, keep maybe even increasing my short positioning. The markets are running a bit extreme, to my understanding. We can see also that technicals like um, like the S&P 500 here is in overbought territory. Yeah, the market right now could even uh, uh, going uh, go all the way towards like 3,004 or, or 4,000 level or whatsoever. I wouldn't really care about it to be to be perfectly honest with you guys here. Uh, instead, I would wait for other opportunities uh, up at the highs if we would really go higher and uh, and sell the markets uh, uh, again I, I don't see I don't see that we are right right in these uh, in these levels where the market should sustainably trade higher I said this Starbucks analogy got it from a friend living in Canada 
uh, she she posted that uh, that bit of news uh, on uh, Facebook. I haven't validated that one yet. We can see though, and that's interesting here. We sold Facebook uh, on the 21st of May. That's uh, a couple of days ago, right? So about two weeks back, and the market has not been rising uh, a lot here. I mean, it's not a big position, but uh, even this one is not really increasing much in value. Uh, of course, the um, Arach uh, also the Dow Jones could uh, could keep up with this one, but I feel the market right. So it's, it's, it is moving higher. If we create a new high, could be the case. Obviously, as well, Marshall said, and I agree with this. We might get further news, further insights during the press conference in light of our trading here right now, and in light that we uh, already reduced the stop loss to break even. I would say that's a valid uh, position here we have on, and I would focus on the dollar, Canadian dollar. As that long-term view, if every if every uh, um, um, if every woman kind of uh, staying at home now buying shares, if every taxi driver is now uh, buying shares, it's really time for for me to maybe not do the same. Uh, not that I'm smarter than them, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't just like to to be involved in the markets if it's if it's just uh, uh, retail driven and not not uh, um, uh, driven by by uh, by fund managers in general. We can see euro dollar should have would have could have. Anyways, we made some money up here. And, uh, um, and yeah, that's good. And our dollar cat moving a bit lower, so that's looking good. But uh, uh, as I said, the, the Dow Jones here, yeah, it could still move higher, as I said, but um, I'm rather interested right now to increase uh, short positionings. Looking into, um, or looking at um, here some news ideas, uh, we can see also that the volatility index, the S&P 500 volatility index, started yesterday increasing a bit uh, in, in value as well and uh, usually that means uh, volatility or uh, increased amount of volatility is rather uh, uh, rather cautiously seen by market participants and uh, you can see the same which has happened here in March right February and March uh, uh, March when uh, when the stock market fell, uh, saw the the recent uh, uh, lows we've seen uh, for this year uh, that was happening that was happening with high volatility we can see and uh, the market still stays below this uh, kind of falling trend line that's interesting if you believe the markets uh, would stay would stay up high but as I said we have a lot of uh, factors here as well we have the uh, the uh, unemployment factors from the US where people are getting uh, 600 600 US dollars weekly some of uh, some of the unemployed uh, are getting even more with these uh, paychecks from the government than in their regular jobs uh, that's going to potentially also change uh, at some point I think end of July those ones uh, uh, currently at least are going to uh, to be expired as well we have a lot of factors where i feel the situation is not really as good as 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 it as it sounds on the markets if you're believing for example as well here uh, um airbus right so they're they're not really manufacturing anything right now but if you're looking at the share price of airbus it's going to increase a lot right now coming down but the market really fell uh, fell to a certain bottom here as well uh, you could, see, could have a look at singapore airlines for example if you would have a look at those uh, uh, as well uh, a nice airline at least for me here uh, living in uh, singapore but also those guys are like you know everyone is growing but there's no there's no real well not them currently to be honest recently oh, that was last week okay haven't haven't checked them oh also this is this is the us version sorry this is the US version of uh, uh, 6l is the the one in singapore um uh, so uh, you can see even those guys are you know all the all the airplanes all the manufacturers all the uh, the airliners are also showing momentum to the upside and it's not really uh, that it's not justified that for me it's just uh, going a bit too fast and, and too much retail driven which is why i would say look you know i'm a bit more cautious on this and uh, uh, taking uh, staying out of the current situation especially if we can see right now that uh, that the markets here giving us some return as well on the dollar cut which is nice i think and uh, well i see potential let's have a look at this uh, atr being uh, being just around the corner uh, nice marshall we are running at 40 pips of floating profit that's one of the biggest news events in recent traded history from us <laughs> we always make oh, five or 10 pips, right whoa the markets move <laughs> very good yeah. By the way, I was, I was looking at the dot plot. It's really funny. 17 people think zero for this year. 17 people think zero for next year. 15 people think zero for 2022. One person thinks 
0.375, so meaning a 50% chance of one height. But one person, yeah. one person thinks one million, one and a point one two five one and an eighth. One person, only one thinks rates will be up to one percent. So basically, mm -hmm. everybody agrees that rates will be at zero, except for one outlier. Yeah. So, so it really, can, it really shows. Yeah, we can ignore that. Yeah, yeah. I don't usually usually on this on this channel they also they also push all, push over the the um, the picture of the dot plots but uh, nobody has posted it yet. Um, in any case, we can see um, we can see here what's happening. So um, time potentially to get out of this as well at some point. I think uh, um, this looks like the market. Okay, we overextend a bit. Where is the next uh, support area? Kind of in line with the recent trend. That's not often the case. Interesting as well. Right now, it makes sense. Support area here, retraced higher. And then for our candle here, we see some uh, bearish candlestick formation as well now broken. And the market stops currently at some sort of a support area. And I think we are, yes, we are getting, we're getting into the extension of the rubber band where I would say, and that's exactly also here on the daily chart, we get into the, we get further more into the oversold territory here. So the market might pop back up. Guys, I think boop, that's it. Let's close out this position as well. It was a fruitful day here for us. Uh, that's paying off for a nice dinner and a nice steakhouse with a couple of beers for all of us in the webinar. I know we have quite a lot of people in the webinar, not enough for everyone, but uh, for for at least some of you, uh, dinner and drinks. Saturday afternoon, beach time. We are going here in uh, Phuket to the beach with a couple of uh, friends, <laughs> which is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, this is going to be a good uh, news event here to pay for the drinks, I would say. For us, yes, I still have the shorts on, but uh, I'm confident enough. Let's wait a little bit. Everything which goes up also falls eventually. Not that I'm betting on the on the on the wording of eventually, but uh, given the recent volatility higher and given the looks of the markets, this is getting a bit too warm for me. Hence, out of the shares, out of the equities, I've made up quite a bit uh, on the on the run to the upside as of uh, recently as well. And uh, in this case, right now, I think it's time for uh, for some for some for some more short opportunities here and uh, let's have a quick look what's going on because silver was uh, uh okay silver is back up that was actually interesting silver went quite low earlier and i was wondering why that was the case you have any idea uh marshall precious metals went low uh, uh that's that's kind of a, a strange since uh, they tend to be negative inversely correlated with interest rates. The fact that the Fed's gonna keep rates at zero for the next couple of years should support the precious metals, I would think. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's, and because they seem to be bullish on economic activity, I would think that that would be good for silver. So mm. no, it's, it strikes me as a little strange. Yeah, in any case, no, the market it, turned, turned around, so. Um... It was it was not overly bad maybe for us here as well. Gold, I'm a bit cautious. Still standing with the same idea here for the guys of you. And I'm happy that so many of you are coming here to the webinar session. I would love to have the exact same participation during our first of all Monday outlook and obviously as well uh, during our regular webinars here throughout the week where we talk about basic trading ideas investment strategies and uh, of course any sort of question you might have in the markets live trading is obviously also and uh, right now the webinar I see it as being the similar pattern as uh, we can see in the general markets right uh, live trading news trading has always been uh, the favorite webinar sessions here with all participants here but uh, we make the money definitely at least uh, and uh, likely i'm also talking for marshall uh, uh, himself here um, we make the money usually uh, throughout the year throughout the trading day to me it's a, it's also it's a normal job i trade the market stay in day out you know win some lose some usually trying to and mostly making a bit more than we lose but uh, it's um, it's an everyday uh, a work it's an everyday game for some others but it's not this uh, friction with which which some of you might have just uh, uh, getting in the markets when there's news events news events uh, are a bit of the say icing for the cake maybe and um, 
you should really know what you do and trade it with caution. If some say, and I know that as well, oh, Frank, you know, you're trading alert, that's really not really working out here right now, uh, and then it's a message of uh, you are highly over leveraged. So as uh, Marshall also shared the, the, the warning sign as well, first of all, we have to push this in, but secondly as well, the information is very informative as well for you to kind of digest, meaning if you risk a bit less, especially at the beginning of trading, you can not only uh, win a bit less, that's what all focus on, but you can also essentially lose a bit less because most uh, traders, uh, especially at the beginning of a trading career, lose money. And uh, the point is, first of all, you should educate yourself. That's what uh, Marshall and me are trying to, uh, to show you here as well, how the fundamentals work, how charting patterns work to uh, obviously then also know with our, with our uh, history past working him as well for banks and me for a, for one of the richest families in Germany to trade foreign for an exchange market for them uh, and so all of that uh, together means as well just educate yourself first and I always keep the same analogy with the uh, driving school you don't drive for the Porsche or Lamborghini on the highway at your first uh, lesson you also start on a parking lot and uh, just getting familiar with the car and the same applies should apply in trading as well. So enough said, but I cannot, uh, Marshall, I cannot emphasize this uh, more than enough because I know so many people which are saying, oh, the trading alerts are shit, this broker is bad, they take out my stops, they do this and that. In the end, it's just when you understand how the markets work, you, uh, of course, also lose money, but when you understand your psychology, when you understand how the markets, how the structure works, then it's definitely, it's a long-term game, it's a long-term idea, and it's a, just, a, it's a great a passion only for some, but it's also a great job moving forward, and uh, that's, uh, that's what I think uh, makes sense. Malise, thanks for your Telegram message here. She sent me a note on uh, the differences in uh, in uh, bankruptcies in the US. I talked about um, today in the morning in our German session, I talked about Hertz and uh, I was asking, why, uh, technically not asking, but I was saying why could so many uh, uh, so many insane people bid on a company which is unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to call it, a bankrupt here. And uh, uh, of course, there's the difference of the chapter 11, chapter seven filing, I'm aware of this as well, yet the the, the simple fact that you're, you're purchasing shares from a company which filed for bankruptcy and the market is really celebrating this in a huge move to the upside gives me the feeling that uh, something is wrong in the markets. And uh, I think I'm not alone in this uh, and just because most of the funds, most of the hedge funds as well are not involved in the markets as well. A friend of mine who is uh, running the futures desk at Singapore running it for the UBS bank also uh, kept saying that the business for them is actually uh, moving forward not overly bad but he says the problem is that uh, most of his clients are, are uh, uh, deleveraging so they take on less risk as well especially during the current market situation and his clients you have to know are funds, hedge funds, brokerages, comp brokerage companies and all that so uh, if he as one of the bigger guys and I know uh, I've known him since he was uh, just a neighbor in Singapore and uh, my uh, quite often keep saying as well the same thing as well so that uh, less risk in the markets moving forward uh, makes somewhat sense and uh, that's at least what he can see from the uh, from the uh, from the say uh, professional institutional investor side so take this guys take this as a as a not a lesson but as an idea as well the markets are open they will be open every day uh, here of the week for the for the cryptos five days of the week which also for me is more than enough monday to friday but uh, just uh, get out of uh, the, the the positions when when you don't want to stay in them anymore or when they're turning against you for a little while too much and stay in the positions which uh, are creating uh, money for you guys as well so silver starting to move a bit higher we can see um, the stock markets also tends to move a bit uh, higher. We can see that as well. Raj, your uh, Dow Jones starts, well, doesn't really keep up with this, uh, which is more with this move. Seems interesting as well. Um, I don't know which why, why now the Dow is lagging behind a little bit. In general, as I said, I'm still uh, overly on the short side of things here, and I believe as well that, uh, that the short side of things uh, might work out. So let's see. We can just we have uh, we have uh, we have how many? We have four contracts. We can just easily add another two or three contracts as well at these higher levels at some point when the markets might give us. Uh, hopefully it does some sort of a, a signs of falling a bit once we once we open uh, one or two contracts further again which we can easily manage with this account at least uh, then we just need half of the of the of the move to the downside at least uh, to be back uh, back uh, back at break even 
and in this case to close out positions if we want to uh, taking out profit as well. So sometimes it's a bit of a, 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 a it's a quick momentum game, sometimes sometimes a long momentum game. But uh, of course, if you know your numbers and if you know and understand how much leverage you can play, and you can see I'm not playing with big leverage, right? So I have small positions on here given this given this account size as well, and uh, and this it makes me uh, this enables me to sleep at night easily and to manage my risk accordingly. Pretty much cool-headed, of course, when this initial move uh, works or happened as well. I was wondering at the beginning, Marshall said, you know, like, it's not as dovish as it might mean. And then I saw the move coming and saw like, okay, that might mean that the US dollar turns uh, stronger here, which can be expected, especially after such a long move to the upside. Yet this didn't have, uh, didn't, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't happen. So now the market trading back up at new highs here and rolling. Marshall, yeah, I, I'm I said, done I, with my I said, Okay, yeah. I just wanted to say that looking at what they've announced, it was pretty much in line with expectations. It was not more dovish. You know, they didn't come out with anything that was a major dovish surprise. No further loosening, no, no real, mm. uh, nothing. But the, what uh, struck strikes me is that the do, that uh, markets had come off or that ahead of time that they the dollar had mm. had uh, had weakened that. that other currency that it was a risk off mood ahead of this perhaps mm. in, anticip in anticipation of some that maybe because of the unemployment figures or whatever that they might become more uh, more bullish and i've mm. seen no signs that they were any more bullish uh, not mm. more dovish but pretty much as expected and that's why i think it, it's a risk positive mood just because you know we had the yen going from 109 to 107 in the last couple of days Solely, be, I think, because of uh, position squaring ahead of this, ahead of this. So people were expecting. I, from that, I gauge that people were expecting some sort of, of uh, bullish, bullish sign from this. I got no such, such sign. In fact, no, virtually no change at all from the previous mm. month's sta previous statement, which implies that, to me that Powell's uh, press conference will be no change from the last time. And the last time he was really, really worried, really worried. I mean, this is a guy who doesn't sleep at night. So yeah. I think this is that uh, the press conference is likely to be dovish, and I think we're likely to take off further once uh, once he gets up to speak. That's uh, interesting, uh, as you say. Yeah, I think we are out. We made money anyway. So right, we made. I mean, we, we, we took some from the euro dollar move up. It was great that we uh, we got the chance to take this one earlier. And on the other hand, as well, we got out of this uh, dollar catch short. Why? Simply because the market has moved a quite fair bit, and quite often the markets turn to reverse a little bit. And we are now currently sitting at the daily ATR level here. So uh, some sort of a supportive range uh, uh, is uh, has been has been achieved. Uh, you could maybe argue as well that the market might go lower two entry points here another support level would be 133.76 that's the recent level we can see and the next level would be the 133.50 thereabout right so if you have a look at this and uh, a mark uh, for yourself potentially trend lines for further trading here i'm out as well late enough here at uh, uh, 130 Thailand time, but uh, if the market does the same as uh, as expected here as we had in the past, yeah, support area here, the market falls, comes back. Of course, this is over a longer period of time, but uh, comes back up, finds the same level as resistance, and then falls further. The same also could apply on the shorter time frame here. Either the previous uh, bigger support level here, which is the one we took to sell, right? which could now be not only support anymore but resistance or the next support area which sits at uh, 33 roughly say 60 if the market turns back higher could take these two for somehow selling pressure here to use it as selling pressure if you would want to uh, that would be at least something we could see right market bringing back up here and then boom falling off the cliff again so keep an eye on this as well on the other hand is that uh, we have done away quite a way to the downside here. We are sitting tight next to initial support areas, right? And that means the market might be inhibited of falling further. I think at least we can see that. And what we did was good, and that the market 
after retracing higher and might give us some new opportunities here again tomorrow. Guys, happy trading. Thanks, Marshall, for your fundamental help. That always uh, makes it worthwhile having you around here as well. Um, so you can focus on that. I can keep an eye on my trades and we are talking about the same thing. I hope you have learned a little bit. I hope you uh, were also able potentially to uh, trade this accordingly with us. I hope that you at least also took uh, took advantage of our position, which we took here, the Euro, Euro dollar long. Not often the case that I'm trading news events with a direct view beforehand, but we had an interesting opportunity and we really grabbed it here when the market fell earlier here and now turned back higher. Marsha, cool. I'll see you maybe next week for any news events. I'm not really sure if right. we have anything important on. And, next week uh, we've got the Bank of, the Bank of England meeting. Uh, yes, true. We have to discuss yeah. who will cover that. Yeah, exactly. So Bank of England might be where we are hosting a, a co-host session again, yet we'll meet up on Monday, if I'm not wrong, right? So Monday oh, yes, we'll yes. check out uh, our weekly outlook, market talks, uh, Marshall and me together on Monday morning. Guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Marshall, thanks again for your help. And uh, cool, I'll get back to you here. Yes, for your trade. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Bye.